en question. President, please be seated. President, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Reprise de l'audience. And Mr. Isar Osman, I only have a, a few uh, remaining questions uh, put to you. Since you have responded to several of my questions, can you tell the chamber how many Cham people were living in Swai Kleng before the uh, rebellion? Did you find uh, that out through your research? Answer. We did not know the total number of people. However, we had the figure of families. To my recollection, there were 1,240 families. And I think this figure is mentioned somewhere in my book. And after the collapse of the Khmer Rouge regime, people returned to Swai Klen uh, village, and there were about 120 families uh, returning to the uh, village. However, these these are. Families, but uh, certain members Ce of the familles, families uh, certes, lost their life during the regime. President, uh, thank you. President, je vous remercie. I'd like now to uh, refer to the uh, Cham rebellion against the uh, Khmer Rouge in Kapol. Can you tell the uh, chamber whether you, through your research, found out the reasons for the rebellion by the Cham people against the Khmer Rouge in Kapol? You have touched upon the rebellion in Clan. However, you said that the rebellion at Kapal took place uh, before the rebellion in Swai Klen village. Answer. The rebellion in Kapal was different from the one in Swai Klen. The Cham people in Kapol refused to les follow the instructions of the Khmer Rouge. They were forced by the Khmer Rouge to close their mosques, to stop uh, their five times a day pray, and to relinquish uh, their traditional attire. Those in Kapol didn't follow the instructions. Les habitants de Kapol n'ont pas suivi les instructions. And then the suppression started in 1973. La a commencé en 1973. The Khmer Rouge found it difficult to enter the Kapol area, and in about 1974, the village chief of Kapol, including the uh, religious leaders, to hold a meeting outside the Kapol village. And allow me to add that the Kapol village was located on an island surrounded by the Mekong River. So the village chief and a few of the religious leaders were called to uh, get on a boat to attend a meeting. And then to, they, the people in Kapol were concerned that they would be arrested, and for that reason there were about a hundred uh, villagers who accompanied them to the meeting. And when they arrived, then uh, they, uh, there was no proper meeting or any uh, debate or discussion, and they returned to their village. 
the Khmer Rouge kept sending the same messages to Kofal area that they should not uh, practice their religious anymore and should follow uh, the revolution. But the uh, villagers in Kofal refused to do that. They still held on to their religious practice, their customary tradition. And in 1975, en 1975, the Khmer Rouge actually entered uh, the area. Rouge initially, entrer. there were cadres from Dans the uh, Krochma district, parage, including the chief of the Krochma uh, district, district, to go into Kopal for one or second time. And for their last entry, the rebellion, the troop place. When they entered the car park for the first or the second time, although they didn't la, la fois, say si anything, the villagers did not follow their instructions. And in around August of the year of that year, which was a uh, Ramadan le mois month. Du Ramadan, there were cadres from the district, including the security forces, who went to Kopal area to uh, call a meeting. They instructed all the villagers to attend the meeting. However, uh, some other villagers did not go because they were afraid that the uh, Khmer Rouge would take action against them. So, uh, villagers attended Donc, to the meeting, and in the meeting, a serious plan was imposed upon the local villagers. The plan imposed five conditions. Il y avait cinq conditions qui étaient imposées par ce plan. And the uh, five conditions include, and allow me uh, to uh, quote, President uh, Council Copper, do you have the floor? Maître Copé, du président, vous avez la um, parole. Maître Copé. Thank you, Mr. President. Je vous remercie, um, Monsieur le all Président. We've read um, Mr. Osman's book, Nous so I don't think there's a need for him to either uh, quote or summarize his book. Uh, and maybe, Mr. President, um, you can also instruct um, um, the witness to um, testify only to facts as to what he himself experienced, because he's basically summarizing uh, the statements he took uh, for his book. Uh, not to mention that most things that he is saying, um, or at least the majority of things which he are, uh, which he is testifying to, are disputed facts. Um, so I'm not quite sure what we have been doing this morning so far. Um, uh, we've all read um, Mr. Osman's book, and I don't think there's a need for him to summarize, let alone quote from his own book. Résume ou qu'il fasse une longue citation de son livre. Just very briefly, Your Honor, of course, the witness is being called as an expert witness, not a witness of fact. As an expert, an expert's entitled to explain to the chamber whatever information they rely on, whether it's something they read, something someone told them, or something they experienced. Uh, so there's nothing improper about this witness explaining what happened, and I'm sure Council is going to ask questions similarly to the witness about uh, what is in the book or what happened during the rebellion. Thank you. Very, very briefly, Mr. President, um, the witness was um, four years old, 75, so he is basing himself upon what he has heard, although he's telling it like he was actually there. Um, I think there's no basis in, in case law for as to what the prosecution just said. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the point of uh, the whole exercise up until now is, other than the, uh, the expert summarizing depuis ce matin, mis à part le fait que l'expert est en train de résumer les déclarations qu'il a rassemblées et qui constituent son livre.
Young man, thanks to no president. I am careful with my questions. Usually, my question starts with based on your research. Par la formule d'après vos recherches. He is not here as a fact or witness. Actuellement, il n'est pas un témoin de des faits ici. My question to put to him is the best on his research. Cible essentiellement les recherches qu'il a faites. And the chronology of his research resulted in the publication of his books. Et la séquence chronologique de ses recherches a conduit à la publication de ses livres. May now continue uh, with uh, your extract on the uh, five uh, conditions imposed by the Khmer Rouge and that you used in your book. Par les Khmer Rouge que vous avez dans votre livre. Expert. Expert. The five conditions are the following. Les cinq conditions sont les suivantes. Number one. The women who are charm have to cut their hair short following the uh, uh, revolutionary style, and that they have to stop wearing headscarves. Second, the Quran which is the best of the Le Islamic Quran, religion, shall be gathered and burned. Three. All Troisième the Jam people in Kapal village have to raise pigs and eat pork. Et manger du porc. And the next condition is they stop. Ensuite, they have to stop praying. Il fallait mettre un terme aux prières. And all the mosques have to be closed down. Et toutes les mosquées devaient être fermées. And the last condition imposed is Et dernière condition imposée. the jam men and women les hommes have to les femmes <coughs> Mary and their ethnic groups, and not with the Cham people. These five conditions were imposed. However, the uh, Cham people living in Kapal did not accept any of them. Question. Thank you, and based on your research. What was the activities or suppression happened? That is, the suppression against the uh, Cham people living in Kapal. Can you enlighten the chamber uh, the result of your Donc, research on the suppression against the uh, Cham rebellion in Kapal? Au sujet de la répression contre les chambres de Copal. And so, whether they would accept the conditions or not, they, uh, les conditions ou the les meeting pas, still continued that day. And then the meeting passed the prey time, and that month la was a, a, a fasting month, and that de they have to pray at about 6 p.m. But they were not allowed to do that. As the uh, meeting continued, so while the meeting was still ongoing, Et where the district chief spoke, le chef du district a villager stood up. Les villageois ont commencé à se lever, ou un villageois plutôt s'est levé. And then shouted in the Arabic language, that is a call for prayer. 
In uh, the chant or Arabic language is azan, that is call for prayer. He shouted to everyone or calling everyone for prayer. And then the situation became chaotic as the villagers who were attending the meeting stood up. Then there were those uh, forces who were there uh, ready to suppress the Cham people. But as they observed that there were more Cham people in the meeting, they uh, withdrew uh, their forces. Next morning, they kept sending the same message to Kokpa uh, villagers that they had to uh, surrender and that they had to acknowledge and accept the five conditions. The villagers still refused to accept uh, the uh, conditions. Lastly, they sent in their soldiers Enfin, ils ont fini par envoyer with des all kinds of weapons, of uh, automatic armes, rifles and artillery, because they couldn't use uh, firearms to fire from the other side of the river to Kapol, and for that reason they resorted to using artillery to shell into Kapol. Then they sent their forces ils ont by leur boat and par bateau. As for the uh, villagers, they were in the same condition as those eux, in Swai Klein. They didn't have any Swai weapons. They only have knives, shots, and stones. Des épées et des pierres. So there were more uh, victims at uh, Kopal since they were uh, fired upon by weapons Puisque and artillery, and there were countless deaths of the villagers there. Dead bodies were covered in big pits. Les there were 30 or 40 dead bodies in each pit, and even those who carried the dead bodies sometimes corps. were uh, hit and uh, died. And for that reason, they could no longer be in a position to uh, protest. They had donc, to uh, flee. Some of them had to swim uh, crossing the Mekong River. Some were uh, recaptured and executed. Those who survived the ordeal were arrested and sent to Rokarknau commune. They were gathered there. Then they alleged that all the villagers in Kapol were enemies. However, there were different kinds of enemies, category one, two, and three. And the first category enemy had to be sent to a location separately from those in the second and the third categories. However, they were all sent to detain differently in Chu, Chumkadong and Barai. As enemies were actually were considered four different kinds of enemies. But our area was infected with malaria, and for that reason, Il, the Kapol villagers died a lot in that area. Mostly villagers from two villages La died due to malaria, and the survivors from des malaria were relocated ont été ensuite transférés to uh, the north part of the uh, river. President, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Expert, uh, for your uh, time. And I conclude my preliminary question. And um, the chamber will give the floor to uh, the prosecution uh, to put uh, the question to the expert before other parties and uh, OCP and the call lawyer will have um, uh, one day and one session to put questions to the expert. You may proceed, prosecutor. 
Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. Witness, Excuse can you please you help us by explaining to the Chamber what is it that makes a Cham person in Cambodia identify themselves as Cham? What's different about Chams from other Cambodians? Respond and thank you for your question, Mr. Prosecutor. Réponse. Je vous remercie de votre question. Cham people Les Cham are not very different than other, even though they live in any community, because si they were from uh, the same Champa land, uh, which was violated and uh, taken by Vietnam. A number of Cham people fled to Cambodia, other fled to Hainan in China, and some other fled to Thailand, and other fled to Malaysia. But they uh, talk, they speak the same language. Even though the um, mountainous uh, ethnic minority Cherai si and Rotai, <coughs> they could understand Cham language because they are they were originated le, from Champa. Uh, uh, they are Champa. a little different uh, in uh, religious practice Leur and religion. religion est uh, some of the Cham who practiced Certains Islam and other did not practice Islam because Islam, from the beginning Champa was not different from Cambodia and they uh, practiced Hinduism. And when Cambodia changed its religion from Hinduism to Buddhism, some of the Cham people were also changed also changed also their religion, religion. Uh, for themselves also when their country uh, collapsed and some of them uh, still Et practice Hinduism some of them were real Hinduists for example some of the charm in Vietnam and charm in Cambodia are divided into the real Islam and other uh, Islam who would practice uh, Islam and Hinduism it's called Cham Imam San in Arabic um, they would go to pray once a week as for the Cham who uh, practice Islam from Arab country, they would um, um, pray five times a day. And you can look at their appearance, their language, their tradition, and they uh, have the same, they share the same, but the only little difference was their religious practice. Thank you. So you explained, uh, you've mentioned Merci, that Cambodians came from Champa, which was historic land in Vietnam. Champa. And in your book, you say that was the 15th century. So um, about 600 years, 500 years before the DK regime. How was it that the Cam Cham community in Cambodia was able to maintain its separate identity? Donc, what were the important factors, if any, for the Cham people Cham de de to maintain their community Cham as such? Cham Response in Cambodia, Cham people speak Cham language, and their lifestyle, living um, uh, as a Cham in their communities, and they uh, did not. Uh, 
live with other uh, people. They practice and they uh, pray and they keep their names as charm people. And we were proud of um, our identity et as charm people. So we did not lose our identity. So you could identify charm people uh, by their charm. language, uh, the language la they are speaking and their dress uh, and so on. The Cham language, la can cham. you explain at the, during the DK regime or at the start of the regime, dire, uh, régime, did most Chams speak that la language? Could they plan? read or write that language? And if so, how did lire, the si language oui. get passed down from one generation Comment to another? La Respond at any time, Réponse. except during the K regime. Uh, en fait, in all generations, the charm would speak charm language. They would write charm uh, letter or uh, vowel and a consonant for their language. And there. Uh, Ancestors were not from Cambodia, but they were from Champa. Until today, we speak Cham language. But um, if you talk to Cham people, they have difficulty to speak Khmer. And um, except uh, other Chams who uh, work with Cambodian people and learn Cambodian people like me, and then we can uh, speak Khmer fluently. What about religion? And I'm sp talking specifically about religion, the Cham in Cambodia. Cham How important is religion to their identifying themselves as Cham? Response. Response. This is the point that uh, people misunderstand in Cambodian society, and it is also misunderstood by people outside of Cambodia. So uh, they would perceive that those who practice Islam, they said they were charm people. But in fact, it is not the truth. It's not true. For example, in Malaysia, uh, they practice Islam, and in Kuwait, they practice Islam. So those who pray five, day, uh, five times a day, who um, believe in uh, Muhammad, uh, they were Islam. But it is not true that um, those who practice Islam are all charm people. For example, um, you talk about terrorism, and they painted people who, um, who commit that act were charm. But in fact, uh, they were not. To identify the charm, you can um, identify their religion, their culture. It was my fault. My question was clear. My question is, uh, Cambodia obviously is a majority Buddhist country. How important is it for Cham people to maintain their own identity that they be allowed to practice Islam? Quelle est l'importance de la pour le maintien de son identité? Plutôt. Pouvez-vous nous décrire à quel point il est important pour euh, le peuple Cham de maintenir yes, sa religion afin correct. de sûrer son identité Réponse. Oui, vous avez raison. Most Cambodian practice Buddhism. La plupart des Cambodiens sont bouddhistes. But when it comes to most of people who practice 
Islam in Cambodia are charm people. La majorité But des musulmans there are also a minority group Mais of um, people des, who uh, practice Islam, but they are not charm people. Question. One more time. Bon, je vais essayer Sir, autrement. My question is for chams who practice Islam. Ma question. How important pour is pour les chams qui sont musulmans, pouvez-vous nous dire à quel point pouvez-vous nous décrire l'importance de l'islam, à quel point leur liberté de culte est importante pour pouvoir maintenir leur communauté et leur culture But, okay. Uh, expert, thank you. I have a better Merci. understanding non, of your question. question. Islam is an important religion for the believer. The believer must practice croyants. this religion. And Cham people les croyants who believe in Islam, qui sont musulmans, they have to uh, conserve, to preserve this uh, practice from the ancestors. Um, they will never give up their religion, par leurs and Ils ne they pas have to religion. keep um, and practice it as Islam, except during the K regime, Et there was pour eux de a kind of force them to stop practicing their sauf sur uh, le religion. Où une force, uh, on leur a forcé However, they try uh, to uh, practice Mais and to uh, believe in their religion, in their community and we did not lose our religion. Thank you. Now question. you answered the President's question. You told us something about where Donc, Cham lived president, at the start of the DK regime and that Cham was du régime du Kampuchea démocratique et que Kampong Cham était l'endroit où les Cham étaient les Can plus concentrés. Pouvez-vous nous donner un peu plus de détails et nous expliquer Let me ask you, did Cham live in the same villages si with the Cham people vivaient dans les mêmes villages que les Khmer, villages. ou dans les villages voisins, ou dans des villages différents? Respond, no. no. Uh, Cham people lived in a separate les community dans les communautés distinctes. Um, that um, All uh, villagers are Cham people, but their villages or community um, bordering to Cambodian village, but um, they did not live, mingle or mix with Cambodian people. Sir, there's a document on the case file. E3, 1593. This bah, is the book by Ben Kiernan. And I want to read German. one quote from you and Donc just see if you agree with this or not. Un extrait. J'aimerais voir si vous êtes d'accord um, avec ce qu'il écrit. C'est la page en Khmer 0063 7755 English 0067 French 0063 Muslims form a near majority in only one district, Northern They live together. In big villages, Ils vivent ensemble dans Their des villages, side leurs side. maisons sont mitoyennes, in the 1950s, ou plutôt en grappes de numbered well over 20, il y avait plus de 20 000 uh, Cham. Est-ce que vous êtes d'accord avec cette description de où Cham vivait 
in the early 1970s, sir. Dans les années 70. Êtes-vous donc d'accord, monsieur, pour euh, avec cette description de Ben Kernan au sujet des chambres dans les années 70? Um, your stop. Response. Réponse. I agreed with the point that he Je suis d'accord um, avec euh, mentioned about the location dit, where the chambres were living along le sujet Mekong de là où les chambres, le long including Mekong, Kampong Cham province, province in Krochma district, district Kampong Chanang Posat provinces, et provinces de Kampong Chanang but, uh, et de Posat. there were other um, locations il y avait d'autres endroits aussi but talking about the figure par contre les of, chiffres um, Cham people I don't mean to say Il that he uh, he, ha he he mentioned the wrong figure, je, but je um, this figure needs to be uh, researched and studied further. Il faut faire plus de recherche pour vérifier ces chiffres. So, sir, I'm I'm sure Question. you are familiar Merci. with the zone structure of Monsieur, democratic Cambodia. Did Chams the exist besides in the East Zone? Donc, Did they exist in other zones? For example, les Chams vivaient-ils dans d'autres zones? Peut-être. Je vous laisserai Were there communities near Phnom Penh? Y avait-il des communautés de Chams près de Phnom Penh, à l'ouest, dans les zones sud-ouest? Où y avait-il des Chams? But, but Respond. Réponse. Yes, it is true. Oui. Um, they were living almost all uh, zones of the decay. Ils vivaient dans presque toutes les zones. If you, you are talking about geography, uh, geographical area, and um, they they would live almost every area. Donc ils vivaient presque and partout. In the vicinity of Phnom Penh, there were Cham people il y avait des living since Penh, uh, the 1970s and until now. So uh, there were Cham people in Posat, Batambong, and Kampot provinces. Um, only a few provinces that uh, the, there was no charm, for example, Kampong Spur province. province où il but pas when de you when after Kampong Spur and in Prey Nok, you can si find some charm villages over Nok, there. Il vous y so des I can um, say that um, charm people were living Je almost every zone of the K region. In your Question. book. You state uh, that Croch Chamar district was Kroch long Chmar considered the heartland of Cambodia's Cham Muslims. Can you explain to the court what you meant by that? Why was Croch Chamar considered the heartland? Le cœur de la population Cham du peuple Cham au Cambodge. Pouvez-vous nous dire pourquoi? But na Croch Chamar. Respond. Yes, in Krochma district, oui. this geographical areas is suitable de for more Cham people to live, and there were um, well-educated uh, Cham. Um, Cham intellectuals intellectual or Cham scholars Cham, who went abroad uh, to continue their study were from Krochma district. Intellectual Cham, donc, qui sont allés à l'étranger pour étudier, provenaient tous and, de Krochma. Um, government officials who hold, who held uh, high-ranking uh, officials during the um, um, during the regime before Sous the Sankum regime, there were charm uh, government Sankum officials, Il y avait donc and des uh, qui you can find charm who were close friends to the king. Il y avait des um, qui his des name is uh, Slyman, Par exemple, Slyman. Uh, who was the close friend friend to a former king um, before King Nurodom Sihanouk. So uh, any Cham people who would like to know um, history, 
and uh, religion Donc, um, des chams qui voulaient connaître l'histoire et would be sent to la Krochma religion to étaient envoyés à Krochma pour rencontrer ces penseurs et intellectuels so chams qui y vivaient. It is well known that Krochma is connu. a well-educated um, area Krochma for cham people better than other location um, in Cambodia. Un pôle intellectuel cham. Thank you. In the period Question. before the DK regime, which members of the community were important for the community to maintain its identity? Were there any particular positions or leadership positions that were common in Cham villages? Quels étaient par exemple les postes qui étaient les plus courants, les postes de leader dans les villages Cham? Question. Euh, Sorry, you, your question uh, focuses on the period before democratic de Cambodia regime or avant le Cambodia démocratique during the regime. Ou sous le régime. I'm focusing Question. on uh, what existed before the policies of the regime came into place. I'll later ask you how the Khmer Rouge policies affected this. But for example, in your book, you talk about Hakim. Let's start there. Can you explain what is Hakim? And is that position one that was important for Cham people to maintain their identity? Au Cham pour maintenir leur identité. In Cham communities, there was always hakams. Il y avait toujours un hakam. The hakam focused mainly on religion, Le not on culture était, uh, or tradition. For to the one de, de religion, who et pas tant maintain de the religion in the community. La qui For example, la de the Cham religion has exemple, a law related to Cham, the, il y a une loi. the dealing with the assets of parents to children. So, when dealing with the assets of parents to children, non. whether they want to deal it by using the law of the state or the law from the religion. If the family agree the that they would like to use the law from the religion, si and then it was the duty of the Hakim to make decisions about the sharing of the assets to family members. Décision, and if family members want to use the law of the state, si ensuite, and then they would approach the commune or the police, la police to les autorités de la commune make decisions about the pour que ces asset sharing. Quant au partage du patrimoine. What about Question. other positions? Were there other teachers or others that had a role in helping the community maintain its identity? Hakim is the first person in the community who was responsible for overseeing the religious practices in the village. And then there are two deputies, and the two of them were in charge of the community when the Hakim was absent. De la communauté en l'absence de Hakim. And they are in charge of teaching religion. Ces personnes enseignent aussi les And the religion. religious teachers during the old days they were fed by villagers who provided them avant, les with rice and food. Nourris par les villageois qui leur donnaient and the one did not go Mais to approach the villager for food but it was Hakim who was responsible for collecting food. Le Hakim qui de faire la de and another one was Hachi, Hachi, who was also a respected figure Hachi in the village. Une un, qui jouit un certain respect dans le village. Because he, he went on 
Haji, le, based on the Arabic word, Hajj, means he went on pilgrimage to Arabi Saudi, and when he came back to the village, he did not have the leading position. But people in the village respected him because they they knew that he was a good person, a moral person, because of his pilgrimage en raison du on Haji. And then there's another religious Haji. leader called Me Chum Ah. Ensuite, il y a And in Khmer Chum terms, it means group leader. Ah, ça veut dire chef de groupe. C'est un autre chef religieux. So, according to Hakim decision, Donc, ce, du, par he, une décision du Hakim, he le divided into 10 groups and then each group had a Me Chum Ah. Or group leader. Et groupes, and donc, the euh, roles of the groupes, et group leaders, leader, or Me Chum Ah, acted as the groupe, assistance for the Hakim. En tant du Hakim. Question. Merci beaucoup. I'm trying to move along oui, quickly. I want plus. to start discussing the effects of Khmer Rouge policies on the Chan community. Euh, But I want us to do that distinguishing how the policy may have evolved over time. And, uh, de so I want to start, euh, sir, we've already de, de au fil du temps. had some discussion in the earlier questions bon. about the events in 1975 in Spake Klang and Kopal. But I want to Kopal. go back Mais j'aimerais que nous revenions un peu en arrière, que nous parlions de la période de 1970, la défaite du gouvernement de Lan Nol en 1975. Et donc, pendant cette période de guerre civile au Cambodge, pouvez-vous nous expliquer comment les politiques du PCK et du Front, à l'époque, ont eu un impact sur les communautés de Chan? J'ai une chance que je l'ai sous les yeux, là, le Hakim, le Toon, le Chum. Initially, in 1970, during the Khmer Revolutionary Front, the Cham were not affected. Cham like the Front, because the Khmer Rouge were paid attention to the Cham. And especially during the appeal by the King Father, Sihanou, for encouraging the villagers to go into the forest, the Cham people, they loved the King Father and supported the King Father. Therefore, they supported the Revolutionary Front, donc, which was supposed to be led by the King Father. So, in 1970, 71, 72, the Khmer Rouge still do good things to the Cham. And the Khmer Rouge even educated Cham young people to safeguard their, their, their traditional and their religious identities. So the Cham people loved the Khmer Rouge. But starting from 1973, there were changes. Cham were arrested and detained. And based on my research, in Krochma district, there were dans le the arrests of Cham people in 1973. And those who were arrested, including religious leaders like Hakim, Haji, and Me Cham Ah, they were detained and some of them were killed. And later on, some tués, of them were released. Ensuite, ont été remis en and in 1974, en 1974 there, there were more arrests. Il y a eu une nouvelle vague and the number kept increasing. Le nombre de personnes arrêtées ne so initially they arrested the leaders, début, but later on they arrested. Chefs, ensuite, the scope of arrest included the villagers. So the Cham villagers les villageois Cham lost trust and confidence in the Khmer Rouge movement. Khmer Rouge. But because their land was 
fall under the control of the Khmer Rouge. The Lunol government controlled only the towns and provincial cities. So the Jam people could not go to seek help from the Lunol. They had to face with the suppression all kinds of suppression by the Khmer Rouge. They were killed, they were detained, and that's why it led to the establishments of the resistance movement in the two villages I mentioned earlier. And after the rebellions, about one month later, Après les révoltes, the Cham people tard, were evacuated from their villages and the Cham community were abolished. Et on a aboli les so the Cham. evacuation of the Cham people were different from the evacuation donc, of the Khmer people. The Khmer, Khmer people de who lived in the cities, who lived under the control of the Lunol regime, were evacuated. But the Cham people, Cham they supported the Khmer Rouge, Khmer they loved the Khmer Rouge at the Ils beginning, but at the début. end they were evacuated fin, and their identities, their communities were abolished. On so the suppression on the Cham people, donc, cette du the Cham, persecution on the Cham people Cham were different from the persecution on the Khmer people. La persecution du peuple Khmer. I would like to clarify that the Khmer Rouge cadres, they were Khmer people, they ate pork, they spoke Khmer, Khmer. Porc. but Ils for the Cham people, Cham. they were required to stop speaking their language, abolish their communities, stop wearing their clothes, plus but adopted Khmer clothes. So the, the way the Khmer Rouge treated them Et were donc, different from the way the Khmer Rouge treated the Khmer people because the Khmer Rouge did not force the Khmer people to stop speaking Khmer or stop, Khmer speaking or, or stop eating pork. De so du pork. the policy that the Khmer Rouge donc, issued severely Rouge, affected the Ont eu the, the, the Cham people who had a different or distinct ways of distinctive ways of uh, living. De, un, de vie Thank you. Différent. So I'm going to come Question. to the uh, DK regime uh, and their policies towards the Cham in just a moment. But sticking with the Cham period of the civil war, uh, dans un moment, can you tell us, you said that many civile, Cham joined the, dire, vous, vous the front, loved Cham the front. Did Cham fight on one side of the war or both sides of the war? Were there Cham soldiers with partie, the Lon Nol forces with the front? Dans les deux parties, par exemple, Can you explain? Des soldats Cham dans le front et dans l'armée de Lon Nol? Pouvez-vous nous expliquer? But Mian. Yes, they were on both sides. Réponse. Oui, ils avaient pris partie des Because deux. Because politics in Cambodia, in all time, all regimes, de tout they temps, needed les régimes, the euh, support or force les, from the Cham people. Les politiques cambodgiens avaient besoin du soutien des Cham. For example, during the Lunol regime, exemple, Lunol was also Lunol. close to the Cham people, était lui aussi proche especially Cham. Cham who live close to the city. Cham and there were Cham people who held high position Cham in the government. Dans la Some of them were commanders certains of the soldiers. For example, uh, Brigade exemple, 5, de la Brigade 5, whose commander was a Cham. Cham. And there were also Chams who served in the Parliament et il y avait aussi and des députés, commanders of the military police et des commandants de la police militaire. And for the Khmer Rouge, they also had the Rouge, participation eux, of Cham forces. As Cham I mentioned earlier, at village, force, uh, rural area, plutôt, there were Cham who loved and supported the Khmer Rouge. Uh, as and so Cham joined both sides of the, donc des, of the des deux 
political equation. Thank you. Now, there's one uh, footnote in your Question. book that I'd like oui, you to explain and expand upon a little bit more. Well, this is again regarding this period of the Civil War. It's footnote 175, so I think in all languages that it is, exists that can be found. It says, Khmer Saw, White Khmer, was a resistance group created after 1970. It disappeared after 1975. The goal of the White Khmer was to oppose Long Nole in order to demand power for Sihanouk. When they were active, they joined with the Khmer Rouge. Can you expand a little bit more on this term Khmer Saw? Was it used consistently? What was it? I would like to say that I did not do much research on the White Khmer because the White Khmer were not so much related to the Cham people. So I, did, I do not have much knowledge about the Khmer Saw or White Khmer. Okay, thank you. And we all appreciate whenever you don't have any questions, you just explain that. That's very useful, I'm sure, to the judges. So now I want to come to the period after the Khmer Rouge victory in April 1975, and how that affected life for Cham people. Can you explain, I think you perhaps started already, but can you explain how it affected Chams in regards to their religion, their dress, their way of life? How did the policies of the DK regime after 1975 affect Chams? After 1975, the effect on Cham people did not start from April 1975. It started earlier since 1973, as I told you earlier, that the Khmer Rouge required them to stop practicing their religion since 1973. But the effect on the Cham people in 1975 it affected the Cham who lived in cities or close to the provincial centers who were evacuated. For, as for the Cham people who live in rural areas, uh, there, there were no remarkable changes to them. What occurred to them was after, was during their rebellion, that their suppression and persecution were uh, worst. President, thank you, Mr. Expert. It is now convenient time for lunch. The chamber will take a break until 1.30. Court officers, please find for this expert and the legal officers in the waiting room. And please bring him along with his legal officers back to the courtroom at 1.30. Security personnel are instructed to bring Mr. Kyosun Pon back to the room downstairs and please bring him back before 1.30. The court is now in recess. <laughs>